all have our shijos complete. We checked the syllable counts. Many of you added titles. Some of you decided to keep yours untitled. Both are totally fine. What we're going to do now is share your shijo. So you'll come up to the front. You'll read us your title, if you have one. You'll say your name, and then you'll read your shijo aloud. No need to talk about the syllable counts. We know that it's correct because we already checked it. Uh, then once the person is done reading, we'll tell them we appreciate them, give them a little applause, and then we'll take maybe two or three comments. Uh, what did you like? What did you notice? What did you think of the twist? Before moving on to the next person. Questions? All right, Patrick, you ready to start us off with a bang? Yeah. All right. Yay. This poem is called Death Day by me, Patrick McCurry. It's a usual day in New York City, planes flying over, trying to get to the airport. Suddenly, three planes come down, heading towards the Twin Towers. They crash, death day for many people. What, can, what kind of feedback do we have for Patrick? Yeah, go for it. I share something in the past. Very good. Yeah, he, he drew inspiration from his story from something that really happened on 9-11. Justin, what else? Um, can I tell about the twist? Yes. Okay. So the twist was, um, it was like a normal day, just uh, planes were normal, but suddenly they started reacting, going the opposite they were in crap. Yeah, very good. And one more comment, Ina? Uh, I liked how it was like all peaceful in the beginning and it was kind of like a shocking twist. And also, I have a question, wasn't it two planes? Um, no, I believe, I, people don't exactly know because no one filmed it, no one expected it to happen. I believe I read in a book it was three planes. And what did you say in your story, in that first line? I said... It's a usual day in New York, planes oh, fly over. Perfect, right? And that allows you that flexibility. You don't have to be exact because you just said plural planes. And then the I just predicted three planes. Very good. Because that's why I read. Uh -huh. That's what I've heard from my teachers. And right, and if you were going to keep working on this shijo outside of this workshop, that might be something that you would look up and double check your facts. Awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick. Great job. Yay. Number two, Evelyn, you ready? Okay, so the title of my sheet, she joke, is The Storm by Evelyn Cox, which is me. It's a, a boy and a girl are walking in the city. A big storm comes. They duck under an overhang and look at the restaurant. They find money and eat magical food. Then their dad comes. Aww. Yeah, Patrick, what did you notice? I really liked how you used the word magical to describe the food. It could be used in two different ways, like really magical mm -hmm. or just the food tastes magical. And when you were hearing her read it, what did you think? Which use? I, I actually thought because they just unexpected didn't know that there was a restaurant there. So I thought the magical, like... Like actually magic, like Harry Potter magic? Not Harry Potter magic. Oh, okay. Like other kinds. Okay. Like a different kind, not Harry, not like wand of magic. Okay. Like Is that what you thought, Evelyn? Yeah. Perfect. Do we have another comment for Evelyn? Any more comments? Yeah. Um, I like how, like, in your, um, when you shared with us um, your planning sheet, I, you kind of like had a lot of big plans, and I thought that it's it was going to be hard for you to like summarize it all, but I think you did really well with that because you summarized it all, and it still felt like it still felt really um, I don't know. It still felt really um, clear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Evelyn, talk about that. When you had your planning sheet and then you tried to form it into syllables, did you struggle with it? Was it easy? Um, well, I 
Well, actually, I had thought of that ahead of time, but then I realized you just, like, you have to, like, sort of balance out the things because, like, I already know that it has to be, like, 14 to 16 syllables on mm -hmm. each line, but I didn't know whether to put, like, three 16s or two 15s or one 16 or something. And then, um, so that was kind of hard, but eventually I was able to get two 15s and one 16 into my program. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Yeah, Patrick. I really liked how you used the good excuse of a storm to get them into that magical place. Yep. Very good. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Fantastic. <laughs> Who was number three? Juno. Juno. Hi, I thought I live in the dull, rich dirt. It is warm in the dirt. I'm a potato. I sit in the dirt each day. But one day, I felt a tug. Then I came out of the dirt. That's it. <laughs> Juno, did your poem have a title? What was it? Potato. Okay, perfect. Evelyn, what'd you think? Uh, I really liked his twist because it's like he's like describing the potato just sitting in the warm, cold dirt, and then like and then like something like grabs him out of the dirt, and it's like ah. Yeah. What else, Leela? Um, I like how like um, it's kind of simple, but it's also really um, it it feels a bit magical, like at points. Except it's also really simple and realistic. And I also like how the voice you read it, like, um, I studied poems in my class last year, and we did, like, um, we made poems, and then we planned how we were going to read them to the class. Yep. Like, what voice, and I think you did a good voice for your poem. I definitely agree, and I think when you were saying um, it felt, did you use the word magical? That I hold, that first line where we don't know he's writing about a potato, right? Hi, I'm Bob. And then we don't find out he's a potato till the second line. I think that that helps with the, the magical nature of the poem. Yeah, Patrick? I, I really liked how you left us on the edge of our seats at the end. Maybe you should do another poem as in like an add-on. Like, uh -huh. will he get eaten? Will he turn into fries and get eaten? Right, and sometimes people will do that, right? They'll write one shijo, and then maybe they'll write another shijo, or even a third shijo. Last comment, Evelyn? Um, like, I like really liked his poem because he sort of described everything, and that's really nice, like how he described the dirt. And, the and even the word tug, did you say that, Juno, in there? Yeah, right, that's a really nice descriptive verb that we can see. Thank you, Juno, for sharing. Ina, are you up next? I wish that I've met an ocelot what crawls through the rainforest, all golden brown and small, which blends with the colorful leaves at fall. One day, my parents announced, let's go to rainforest. Ina, stamp there for us. What did, what did you notice, Evelyn? Um, I really liked how she sort of told us some facts about the ocelot, and she was able to get some rhyming in there too, and that was pretty awesome. Yep, I heard the rhyme as well. Was the first and the second line? Um, Rain for, was it, what was it? Wait, no. You want to read those lines to us again? Fall on something. That's what I thought it was too, fall in something. Yeah, it was like, uh, Read it out loud to us. We'll help you. Oh, um, I rhyme small and fall. Small and fall. There we go. Yeah, Justin. Um, I liked how she used um, words to, to describe how the ocelot like, lived or hunted prey because you, you use camouf um, like how it blended in what, in fall. I like. Yeah, because I, like. I couldn't fit all the information and I thought it would be pretty little to figure it out. Yeah, and we talked about how people might not know where the ocelot lives, and I liked how you added that in the first line so that we knew it was the rainforest. Leela? Um, I think you did also what Patch said about Janus poem. You kind of left just on the edge of our Janus, which, um, and it's like you could write an epilogue, another Shijo poem about it, so I think that's cool. Yeah, last comment, Evelyn? Um, so I like that your twist 
that like you're suddenly going to a rainforest to meet the ocelots. <laughs> yes. After you're like daydreaming about the ocelots and how you really want to meet one, and then you start, like, and then you're about to go. Meet them. That's good. Definitely unexpected. Yeah. Very good, Ina. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. All right. Who is next? Do we know? Danny? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, you changed your mind. Okay, let's hear your title, your name, and your shijo. Hi, my name is Danny. I own the shijo. There once was a person. There once was a person. Once was a person. Once was a person. There once was a person. He was totally swag, wearing sunglasses. Person likes skateboarding. He was really good, really brave too. Person got eaten by Pac-Man who come came out of nowhere. <laughs> Evelyn, go for it. Um, I like your twist. <laughs> like, it's really surprising. Like, it's just like skateboarding, and then the Batman comes out and ace him. And Batman. I also like how you describe that he was uh, swag, which means cool, by wearing like sunglasses and stuff. And that's pretty cool. And in your planning sheet, what was the point of your poem? What did you say you wanted to do? Swag. Didn't you say you wanted to shock us? Yeah. Yeah, and you did it, right? That's the first thing that Evelyn said was it was shocking, which is exactly what you wanted. Patrick? Um, I, uh, again, like um, Evelyn said, I really like how he was just skateboarding on just hot day or something, and then all of a sudden he's just there, and then Pac Man came back. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I uh, like how you used a lot of describing words. You yeah. said he was brave, swag, mm -hmm. and you used some objects, skateboards, some sunglasses. sunglasses. Yeah. Which I found very useful. Definitely. Lila, last comment? Um, again, like Eunice poem, I like how you read it. Because, like, um, I also like how you read the title. Like, um, it's, hello, I, I can't exactly remember. But you like introduced yourself with the title like that, and I like how you said um, there's a guy who's totally swag. And, like you read up like um, nothing was happening, but a lot of stuff was happening. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Danny. Nice job. <laughs> Justin, you're next. Okay. So potato season by me, Justin Park. Okay. So one day, old lady was selling potatoes for money. Old lady was selling Philly Bob Joe's brothers and sisters. Potato, potato thought he could poop french fries to shake it like him and live. Okay. <laughs> Evelyn, what did you notice? Um, I like his twist. <laughs> yeah. I think you could write a sequel about like what happens or does he get eaten and stuff? Or do the french fries get eaten and stuff? And yeah, that's kind of cool because he like, like he can make like a sequel to that, like someone like, uh, potato get eaten. <laughs> Patrick, what do you think? I really, really, really like your name, like how you said, old lady Billy Bob Jones. Yep. Billy Bob Jones. Right, that adds to the character. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yep. And Crystal, what else? His voice made it sound funny. Yes. Billy Bob. Very humorous. Justin, thank you for sharing. All right, Crystal, up next. Worst dreams by me, Crystal. I went to my bed and started to sleep. I started to dream. In the forest, I saw cute animals. I started to pet them. I heard a strange noise. A lion came up and ate me. Sweating, I woke up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, what'd you notice, Justin? Um, I noticed that, so you were happy petting those animals but since you didn't see the lion you were you just died it you just died out of died. nowhere <laughs> petting those two animals well she didn't die you didn't right yeah, yeah she did yeah. wait I was dreaming you were dreaming yes she was dreaming okay. yes there we go patrick what'd you notice i really liked how like what justin said like it was all so calm, you were petting the cute animals, and all of a sudden a lion just comes out of nowhere and it realizes the dream, wake up. Right, so almost two things are surprising there, the animal that comes and the dream. Mm -hmm. um, I, 
also likes like um what um I like what they said and I also like like she said she woke up sweating, not that she just woke up. Right. Like, she said she woke, she described how she felt when she was waking up. Exactly, it gives us some emotion. Yeah. Last comment, Leela? Um, just like what Pash said, it, like, well, I think you kind of had two twists, one at the beginning, one at um, the end, because you started with that you go into a journey, and that's kind of surprising. Um, and then, because, I mean, you see, some people who are doing it about things might just start in their dream, but you actually start going into the dream. And then when the line hit you and you woke up sweating again, I think that was also surprising. Definitely. Thank you, Crystal, for sharing. We have two more. Did you want to go next so you're not last? All right. Three more. My name is Zach, and my story is unnamed. Your Shijo's untitled. Yep. The elephant is in Egypt in the president's house. The military captures him and brings him to the army. The elephant explodes and destroys the whole army. Yeah, Patrick, what did you notice? I really like how you, it was, the elephant was in the president's office and the military suggested that it might be a bomb or something, but they were kind of like, not stupid. Just like dumb, handsome. Didn't know what they were Small brain. Sure, sure. Small brain taking it in because then why would they take it out? Right. And then it just exploded. Yep. And good verbs too capture, explode, lots of action. Evelyn? I also like your twist. It's like they're just like bringing back the elephant, and then all of a sudden the elephant explodes and destroys the whole arm. Yes. I really like how all of yours are on totally different topics, right? Everyone did their own unique thing. It's kind of funny. Yes, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Sage or Leela? Okay, my title is Wolf Pup Battle, and um, this is it. Wolf Pup's name Slade and Moonlight pretending to battle. Moonlight pins lay down and is about to bite his, his neck hard. Their mother comes out and brings them into the cave to sleep. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, what'd you notice? Um, I liked kind of a twist. But it was like the pups are having fun playing outside, and then the mother comes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Something that animals and children maybe can relate to. Patrick. Okay. I'm like Evelyn. I think that it was a good thing. Bring in the mother bringing oh, them yeah. inside. Yeah. One of them was about to yeah. chop the other one's head yeah. off. Right, and she had some action there where they're pinning them down. Yeah, what else, Lila? It's kind of like sometimes you see dogs when they see each other, they wrestle and stuff, and then um, the owner's got to stop them. It's kind of like that because the wolves are wrestling and then the mother comes and magically ends the world. How did you get your idea? Uh, I just saw the wolves, because I kind of like wolves, and how they're like in the wild. And I know that um, wolf pups like to play a lot. Yeah. And battle. So. Very good, Sage. Thank you. <laughs> Last one. Are we right, Leela? Let me see. My title is CCC, and it's by Leela. In London, from, 14, from 14s to 16s, there was sickness and sneezing, but Detective Carrot was on the case and solved it with quick pace. The cupcake was behind it, arrested by Cookie. <laughs> Juno, what did you notice? I like how you um, did uh, some rhyming. Yeah, definitely the rhyme, and we could feel the beat or the pattern of the words. Crystal? It was like not about like people, it was like about food, like the food was talking. Right, she personified the cupcake and the cookie, and what was the third one? Um, the cake. Carrot? Carrot? Yeah, good. Patrick? Um, uh, again, like you said, I really like how you personified everything and how um, the cookie arrested. Like, I, I, uh, immediately when you said that, I was just thinking, oh my gosh, Captain Cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Justin. 
like, it's like, this is different. It's different because, like, the ones we did, um, you did sickness, which you do, like, when the bad things come, you did sickness, which you don't, like, have to do without, like, touching. It just moves by itself. But with us, we, like, he did, like, Pac-Man, it had to, like, touch him to, like, die or something. Yeah. 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 Right. Definitely, yeah, and we saw that in Patrick's too. Uh, Ina? Um, I liked how you sounded really confident in how you were speaking, and also I like your rhyming and like the creativity. Yeah, definitely the way that you read it allowed the Shijo to come to life. Evelyn? Um, I liked how you described like what was happening in the land, like the, they were getting sick and stuff. And it also kind of made sense because, mm -hmm. you know, um, like cupcakes and cook like cupcakes aren't really the healthiest <laughs> of all foods. And they do kind of make you sick if you eat too much of them. Yes. So that makes some sense. Very good. Thank you for sharing, Leela. Thank you guys so much for participating and writing your shijos. I really enjoyed hearing all of your stories. You did a great job with syllable counts and a twist. I know that this is a brand new type of poetry to you, but you guys really attacked it and you did a wonderful job. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you.